keep bad breath, prevents plaque buildup, and of course, contains cavity-fighting fluoride. Did you ever wonder just how fluoride prevents cavities? Well, the answer begins in your mouth. It's a jungle in there. You've got close to 100 billion microorganisms feeding and breeding inside your mouth right this second. But of all the organisms in your mouth, there's one in particular that can be downright destructive. It's a species of bacteria known as Streptococcus mutans, or S-mutans for short. You see, S-mutans bacteria have the ability to change any leftover sugar on your teeth into acid. Now, this acid sticks to your teeth in slimy clumps we all know as... plaque. Now, if you let this acid sit on your teeth for too long, it will eventually dissolve the minerals that make up the enamel, the hard outer layer of your teeth. Let me show you what I mean. Eggshells and teeth have something in common. They both contain a mineral called calcium, which they use to stay strong. Now, this is your normal everyday vinegar. Vinegar is actually a weak acid, very much like the acid produced by the S-mutans bacteria in your mouth. I took my egg and marked one side with an X and left the other side unmarked. Then I placed the unmarked side into the vinegar and left it for 10 hours. Here's the side with the X. It's still hard. Now here's the side that's been sitting in the vinegar for 10 hours. The vinegar dissolved the calcium in the eggshell, leaving it weak and flimsy. And that's just what happens to your teeth when they've been exposed to bacterial acids for too long. The acid gradually dissolves the calcium and other minerals in your tooth enamel until you have a hole, more commonly known as a cavity. Now, having a cavity filled is not the most pleasant experience, but it sure beats the alternative. You see, if you don't fill that hole, the S-mutans bacteria will continue to tunnel through the enamel until they reach the nerves and blood vessels at the center of the tooth. If you don't stop them, they'll eventually kill the nerves and blood vessels, which will cause your teeth to just rot. Ew. So, how does fluoride prevent all this from happening? And what is fluoride anyway? Well, fluoride is a naturally occurring substance found in seawater, rivers, and natural springs. In fact, that's how we first discovered fluoride's cavity-fighting properties. You see, way back in the early 1900s, dentists were being stumped by a mysterious dental condition. The condition was characterized by yellow and brown stains on the teeth. The teeth were also very brittle. They traced the mysterious condition back to this. The drinking water, or more precisely, what was in the drinking water. You guessed it, it was fluoride. Or should I say, too much fluoride. The condition was later named dental fluorosis. Now, you're probably wondering, where am I going with all of this? Well, along with having brittle stained teeth, victims of dental fluorosis showed another interesting symptom. They had very few cavities. Once fluoride was linked to fewer cavities, well, there was no looking back. Health officials rushed to figure out what level of fluoride you needed to protect against cavities without causing dental fluorosis. By 1951, the experts settled on one part fluoride for every one million parts water. That's roughly equivalent to adding just under a glass of water to an average size swimming pool. And ever since that fateful day way back in 1951, cities and towns all over the world have been maintaining one part per million of fluoride in their drinking water supplies. I know what you're thinking. Great story, Mike, but let's get to the meat of the matter here. How does fluoride actually prevent cavities? Well, when you drink fluoridated water as a child, the fluoride is absorbed into your bloodstream, 
where it makes its way to your teeth. Now, as your teeth grow, the fluoride binds to the minerals that make up the hard enamel. This new fluoride-enriched enamel can't be dissolved by bacterial acid as easily as regular enamel. Now, keep drinking fluoridated water, and by the time you're an adult, you've grown a nice set of permanent fluoride-reinforced teeth. Well, that explains why there's fluoride in the water, but what about the toothpaste? Well, it essentially works the same way. It's just a little more direct. When you brush with fluoridated toothpaste, the fluoride binds with the enamel right at the surface of the tooth, where the cavities start. This new fluoride-reinforced barrier, again, is resistant to acid attack. It's kind of like applying a protective layer of anti-rust paint to steel. But wait, there's more. You see, not only does fluoride shield your teeth against the acids, it will actually repair a cavity in its early stages. The fluoride binds itself to enamel already weakened by bacterial acid and essentially builds it back up. It remineralizes the decayed spot. This new fluoride-reinforced enamel is actually stronger than the original enamel, making it less likely to be dissolved by another acid attack. Unfortunately, all this protection and repair work is temporary. You see, the level of fluoride in your mouth eventually drops off, and then all work ceases. You've probably got, oh, a couple of hours of protection after you brush, which is why you should brush at least twice a day for a bare minimum of two minutes to get the full effect. Oh, one more thing. Don't forget to spit out the toothpaste when you're done. Don't swallow it, because we all know what can happen if you swallow too much fluoride.